inside carries a content. What you carry inside determines what you give outside. Come on over here. When you are full of noise, when you are full of bitterness, you can only manifest the product of bitterness. Are we here? And what will respond to bitterness is the devil. So a bitter heart can fight, can keep malice. And the end result is disconnection from God. And so the struggle continues. So you have a responsibility to choose what you want to retain inside you. Come, come on over here. You are not just designed and created by God to live anyhow and to become anyhow. Uh, you know, yesterday night I was making a call to one of our sons. And I was asking him, is it true that you were found where they're doing poor betting? It's not here now for a while. But I was asking him, is it true that you were found where they were doing poor betting? He said, no, he just went for a message. I said, the day, I've told them that the day you, they see you there, they should carry you and call me. Praise God. Because all my life, everyone that goes to pool betting, okay, doesn't come out of it until they're old. It's such a terrible habit that makes you poorer than God designed for you. It doesn't make you think straight and think right. Somebody said there was a young boy that went there, he was playing, and they said that day someone must win two million. So he was playing, he got to one point something million. They say, carry your money, go. He said, no. You put the next one, every other thing disappeared. Devil can't give you money without conditions. Come on out here. There's a spirit behind it. Now, you're not married, but you're in the midst of prostitute. What are you doing? You are, you are destroying your access to the presence of God. Now, okay, you are a normal human being, but everyone around you are drunkards, and you sit with them in drunk, and you are not a drunkard. How can you be rich? Listen to me. We are talking about manifestation of sonship. Do I have your right hand up? Are you a son or are you a stranger? The cost of being a son, the cost of becoming a son is the, the measure of price you are willing to pay. Are we here? All these things to the world are normal. People do it. There's nothing wrong with it. But experience as a pastor and as a young man, okay, tells me that people that have seen into this culture and habits doesn't get rich. If you know anyone, let me know. Are we here? So Romans chapter 8 gives us an instruction this morning. I'm not going to be long there, but I want to point out some things to you there and then we close this section. Let me also announce that um, we are returning back to the seasons of prayer. In the 11th hour. I want all the women to return back to their Thursday prayers. Almost this week. If possible you have your meeting. It will be good you return this week. Men return back to your fellowship. It's very very important. This is a season to pray. And every Wednesday this month. We shall have communion. Our, our services from this month will be. Um, um, miracle and communion service. Every Wednesday. What do I call it? Miracle and communion service. There's something we're looking for. Are we here? Something new is about to come out of you. God is going to give you good health. God is going to give you opportunity. And you are going to, you are going to swim in money. Just be faithful. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 read, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
three things are there. Number one, there is therefore now no barrier, okay, no limitation, no condemnation, be it a voice for your foundation that is condemning you. From the word there, there is therefore now is a separation. There is therefore now is a departure. It may have happened from yesterday back, but from now, there's going to be a new motivation. Listen, Romans chapter 8 is gear 5 of the covenant. When driver engages his car on gear 5, he's ready to cruise. The road is clear. He's going to go faster than expected. So when the Bible gets to Romans chapter 5, then somebody say, that is the end of discussion. Come on, are we here? You were talking about, okay, chapter 7. Oh, the things I want to do, those are the things I couldn't do. And the things I don't want to do are the things I suffer myself doing. Oh, who is who? Shame is me, oh, wretched man that you are. Who can deliver you from all day? Those are the stories of chapter 7. Okay? But by chapter 8, there was a deliverance. Come on, somebody here. There was a redemption. Somebody are we here. There was a separation. There is therefore now. Somebody shout, there is therefore now. So, if you engage your mind on chapter 7, you will remain on chapter 7. That is a time of argument and time of regret and time of pain and time of explanation. Oh, I don't know. I wish if my mother had not done this. I wish if my father had not done this. Chapter 8 says, whatever your father had done, whatever your mother had done, whatever you have done, I don't count them anymore. Now, whatever I can I have condemned on my cross. I am giving you the Holy Ghost. You are about to step into your life. You are about to step into your destiny. You are about to march up. I begin to manifest the glory. Can't you know that the glory of God upon your life? Are we here? So it reminds the church and the places where I allow you to be condemned. I have redeemed you. Things that have condemned you, I have condemned. Now I have begotten you. Now live in the memory of my authority. I have given you power. And this power is called delegated power. The power doesn't belong to your father. It doesn't belong to your mother. It belongs to me. I gave it to you to become my agent and my representative to do what I can do. To buy whatever you don't like. To approve whatever you like. To go to anywhere you want to go without being hard. Are you here? Somebody say, there's no more condemnation. Wow. That's why. But there's no more condemnation for everyone. For them that are in Christ Jesus. Why Christ Jesus? Because at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For God has given him a name that is above every name. Be it the, the things in the heavens or the things on the earth or the things beneath. There is a name that has been given to Jesus. And by the time you receive Jesus, you receive a name. Come on, we here. And someone say, and that name is a place. And that place, someone said it on Wednesday. He said, oh, okay, on Friday. He said, he said that name is a place. And that place is the Covenant City. And that's again the end of the discussion. When you enter into a Covenant City with God, you disconnect the Covenant world. How do you think? I think the way I want to live, I think based on what the Holy Ghost is interpreting to me about God. Come on out here. I do know that my father wanted me to live, don't want me to make mistake. So out of his curiosity and level of ignorance, he was concerned about my protection. So he would have done anything to protect his son. 
Come on, are we here? And he didn't do that only for me. He did it for my brothers and for my sisters. That was a good intent. Are we here? But that was not of God. Have you ever seen a babalawo that promoted anyone above himself? Okay, he can do something and give you a big car, give you big money, but very shortly you don't return and you return. What happens? The whole thing scatters. The devil makes riches, but the riches does not endure. But God makes riches, and the riches are without sorrow. Come on over here. Now, there's no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. For them that are in the covenant of life. So when you receive Jesus, what do you receive? A name. What do you become? You become a nation in a covenant city. Come on, are we here? Like Abraham. And then you mark an end to covenant contentions. Everything on the world of covenant of your fathers and mothers that are troubled you shall be annulled and set aside and abolished. Today I declare every covenant of your parents that have been behind are responsible for your own Santa. And this 11th hour, they are separated from your life. I wish you can pay attention to what is coming. Now the next one says, who walk not after the flesh? The greatest enemy of manifestation is the flesh. But how and when are we going to overcome the flesh? Listen. When I read Proverbs chapter 3, and David was saying to Solomon, my son, attend to my word. Incline thy heart to my saying. Then he says, It shall be well. You know, give it to us. There's a lot of things there. Romans chapter 3. And um, give it to me from verse 5. If you're there, go back. Okay, verse 1. And now I think we're going to go verse, verse, six, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, not Romans chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Praise God. All right, let me see. I have my son. Are you there? I want to give you the cure to your flesh. Your flesh has a voice. Help me tap your neighbor. Do you know your flesh has a voice? My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandment. It's an instruction. That is the first key to prosperity. That is the first cure to your body. My son, forget not my word. But let thy heart keep my commandment. Verse 2. For length of days. Are you there? You see, we run into sin of being because our heart has disconnected from the instruction of our life. For little days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. How many things? That law of God is the word of life. For little days, long life, long life. I was driving home three, two days ago. One guy was in, a, in the bike. One was on Marwa. They were ahead of me. And suddenly, the one from Bai came down and slapped the one in, um, in um, Marwa. And that one that he was carrying in the bike, hand touched him and he came down. He said, two of them will die there. On the street, the wife of one of them was there. Try to, the guy will not 
they will lift up themselves. I wanted to come out of my car. But I have also read stories that sometimes when the devil has a goal, they kind of settle with blood. I just stayed in my car and said, oh God, I cast the devil out of this territory because I am here. I am passing a message to you. Because you can come out to go and separate. You'll be the next one that they will hit you with the, anything they have in their hand. But you can be a man of the spirit and you can stand where you are to command the ravaging demon to be quiet and to disappear. And it will be after a while, we just saw that the whole thing disappeared. And we discipline of your mind to follow the counsel of God and to live by the word of God. Come on, are we here? When you are sick, remember what God says. When you are financially down, remember what God says. Rather than worrying. And, and thinking, I don't know what I'm going to die. You might die because you're already thinking you're going to die. Whatever a man thinketh in his heart is what he will become. But in your, in your poverty, you are thinking, oh, Lord, I, I, I know I am not going to end like this. I can see my prosperity. I can see my car coming. Whatever a man think is what he will attract. Come on, are we here? Go back to Romans chapter 8. Let us close. Go back to that Romans chapter 38 after you are finished from this service and read it all through. You will see the gains that are there. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Are we there? It says, Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit? After the spirit. So, what is the spirit here? Remember that the word here, the spirit. Is talking about God because they are spirits. But when you see the word the spirit, is talking about God, the deity of God, is talking about the supernatural God who walks after God, who is mindful of God, who is careful about God, who is trading on God, and is so careful about what God has promised. And I say, in the 11th hour and the 11th month, you shall manifest God. Go to verse 12. Verse 12. Are you there? Therefore, brethren, we are not. We are debtors not to the flesh. We are debtors. Don't keep the memory of what you have ever done with the flesh. Don't keep the memory of whatever flesh are delivered to your life. You are not indebted to your flesh. Are we here? We are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, the detentions of the flesh. It is the flesh that tell you that girl is beautiful. Look at her well. It is the flesh that tell you you can take just a bottle. It is the flesh that tell you give me that headache instead of mud that can revive your blood system. Praise God. It is your flesh. As someone says, you know I'm angry. The woman just annoyed me just to give me a bottle to cool down. It's not, you are not cooling down. You are getting high. Praise God. It takes you high. And then you will get more revolution and more rebellion. And the danger is that your body system will break down. Stop obeying your flesh. It will destroy your life. Rise up and begin to obey the voice of your spirit. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit. Which means be full of God. Look at verse 13 and see what verse 13 says there. I'm just going to take that one more so we'll close. For if ye live after the flesh, what will happen to you? You shall die. So that is death before you die. First and foremost, the liver will pack up. Are we here? And from there to the kidney. Because you've already you are feeding your organs with the things that are not meant to be fed with. My years of traveling on missions, especially America, make me see how wise they are. An American man will take you to bar, pay for, for buffet. I mean, pay for buffet. Because we Africans, they have paid about fifty dollars 
eat as you like. Eat without restriction. I can remember Ken, in one of our visits to Pensacola, we went to a buffet. And then we saw heap of meat like this. Heap of chicken like this. Beans this way. Vegetable, everything was there. Ken said, are we finished this food? I will show them. This one a food. Meanwhile, I was looking at the, at the over there. They were on buffet. Bottle of water. I mean, cup of water. And then maybe um, sweet tea. Small, small vegetable. Even the one that follows us will be eating small, small vegetable. Okay? We we'll want to eat everything there. When we got to the hotel, I said, I don't know what's wrong with my stomach. <laughs> I said, it's time for a meeting. Let's go. He said, no, I don't know what's wrong with my stomach. Every minute, mm, every minute, mm, every minute. So what are we getting? Are we here? I don't know where you go in the night to cool down. But I remember that you are not living. You are not living because whatever I do happens that you can't sleep normal. Every minute you are waking up and you are waking up. It's because of what you have eaten. You have more than sleep. Eat things that can give you sleep. <laughs> oh my God. May God bless you this morning and heal your system. Okay. Well, why are you eating things that is killing you? And tomorrow you go back there to eat. So you don't have control over your appetite. This one is good for you. It's a bar with nail. With a thousand. Everything is good. When your money is going, give that money to your wife or to your sister or your brother and leave with you to cook. You will save money. Understand me. I didn't say you shouldn't enjoy. But once in a while, let it be. Come on over here. You don't have to be foolish. The Bible says, live after the spirit. But if you live after the flesh, you shall surely die. But if ye, through the spirit, do mortify the flesh, it means that you can control the flesh. It means you can command the flesh. It means you can overcome the flesh. You can mortify it. You know what I'm saying to you now? This word may be painful. But watch it. You are going to manifest your sonship. You are going to mind the spirit of God this month. And everything about you will be receiving answers. Let us close this meeting. Now rise to your feet. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the source of God. In the month of November, the spirit of God shall lead you to your point of miracles. I didn't hear you say amen. Jesus. Let me not dwell in those areas. Let me dwell in life. You will manifest. You will carry this same leg and walk into places that will be opportunity. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, receive anointing to be led by the Spirit of God. Your flesh shall be mortified. Your body shall be mortified. Your spirit shall become alive. Your body shall become alive. Your sister shall become alive. Your business shall become alive. You shall be led by the Spirit of God. You shall conceive ideas. You shall conceive ideas. You shall receive attention. In the name of Jesus. Verse 16 says, For the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This month, lift up your hands. There's going to be an agreement between you and God. You will receive inspiration in your mind. You will pray by inspiration. You will conceive ideas. You will manifest the ideas. You will have dreams. You will become your dreams. Receive anointing for agreement with the spirit of God upon your spirit man. In the name of Jesus. 
that verse um, 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the, fruit, the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves groom within ourselves, yes, waiting for the adoption to with that the redemption of our body. Two things. Adoption must take place before there can be manifestation. You must become a son of God before you can reveal the blessings of God. Are we here? Adoption is that you become the same with God. You become an extension of God. And so when God will be looking for those that is going to bless this month, you will be found. Amen. There will be adoption. And the adoption will take place this morning. Amen. Are we here? I decree the power standing between you and God. Hear ye the voice of the Lord. Disappear by fire. Let God appear to my people. Let God appear in our life. Let God appear in our homes. Let God appear in our story. Let God appear in our business. Let God appear in our dreams. Let God appear in our heart. Let God appear in our sister. Let God appear in our blood. Someone shout, let God appear. He said, whereby we have adoption of our body. I mean, redemption of our body. What's the redemption of our body? Our body is being redeemed from causes, from death, from spell. These are the things in the Bible to look at, to appropriate to. I speak to your body now. I speak to your spirit now. I speak to your, to your identity now. Everywhere you've been caused by the blood of Jesus, I pronounce your redemption. Be redeemed by fire. Be redeemed by the blood. Be redeemed by fire. Be redeemed by the blood. Be redeemed by fire. Be redeemed by the blood. The redemption was take place before manifestation. And I said to you, the first seven days of November we answer to your dreams. Miracles shall connect your hands. Money shall connect your hands. Healing shall connect your life. In the name of Jesus. Finally. Finally. I take verse 29. For whom he did for new. Are we here? For whom he did for new. He did he did. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. For what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? Now go back to verse 19. And that's the last verse. For the earnest expectation. Everybody read it together. Listen, this is the revelation that's not time. Creature are things created by God. And what they are waiting is people that can use them. Chinese have discovered some creation. They are doing hard things and making money everywhere. Creations are waiting for souls who can use them and make them valuable. Things out there are waiting for opportunities to be used. Do you get it? The leaf out there as you are passing is waiting for somebody that can recognize it for solution. Are we here? When we discover the, the, the fruit leaf, the armor tree leaf, armor, armor leaf. We say, go and use it. It's very useful. And I think it's from Adelike's family we discovered. I don't know what they were doing that morning that, that came. And I have had testimonies about that. Creations are waiting for recognition and attention from the source of God. Okay? Creatures are in bondage without usage. And we are carrying the spirit of redemption to redeem creation. 
And the Bible said in, in Isaiah 55 that the leaves will clap hand as I pass. That the trees will be sinking as I walk by. Come on, are we here? So if they use trees to do witchcraft, to attack you, God has said trees. If it becomes a mountain, as we appear with the glory of my name and identity, they will bow and they will say, King, I salute you. Come on, are we here? This month, God is in a hurry for your blessing. Yeah. Creations are in a hurry for your blessing. Yeah. The world around you is in a hurry for your recognition. Yeah. I declare you shall be recognized. Yeah. I declare you shall manifest. Yeah. I declare you shall go blessed. Yeah. As you walk into your business tomorrow. You shall manifest. It is your mode of the 11th hour. You shall manifest. Someone say, I shall manifest. In Jesus' mighty name. Wednesday is our service of a miracle and communion. So I see you on Wednesday. Now you take your, your first Sunday Thanksgiving seed in your hand. And we are going to use it as a, also our offering for the service. You take it in your hand. And please, you stand up with it. I will try to see if I can anoint you for this Sunday. I want to anoint you for manifestation. Are we here? When I'm talking about anointing now, you should make move. I know where you are limited.